Today, I would like to teach you how to use the rational zero theorem to find the real zeros of the following polynomial function. Now, first question is, well, what is the rational zero theorem? Well, basically what it says is that if you find the factors of your constant term, and you call those factors P, and you find the factors of the coefficient, or the leading coefficient, that is, of your highest power of X, call that Q, call those factors Q, and you take the factors P and divide it by Q. In other words, you take the factors of P and you take the factors of Q and you divide Q into P. The resulting division will give you the possible real zeros. Okay, so to illustrate this, let's take the uh, constant term, negative 18. It doesn't matter if it were 18 or negative 18. Your factors are always going to be positive and negative. Remember that factors are whole numbers that multiply to give you 18. So two factors then would be 1 and 18, positive and negative, right? Because a positive 1 times a negative 18 would give you negative 18, and a positive 18 and a negative 1, right, would also give you negative 18. So that's why they're both positive and negative. Then you also have 2, right, plus and minus 2, and multiplied by 9, right? That would give you 18. And then you also have one other number in there, right? Or I should say two other numbers, positive th plus and minus three and a plus and minus six. And those should be all of the uh, whole number factors. Then divided by the factors of one. And the factors of one, right? What two whole numbers multiplied by each other give you one? Obviously it's just one and one, right? So one and one, you just would write that as a single value. And again, it can be plus minus because positive one times positive one is a positive one and negative one times a negative one is a positive one. Now, from here, we basically have a lot of different possibilities, okay, of rational zeros. So this gives you like the complete list of possible rational zeros. Not all of them will obviously be rational zeros uh, or zeros just in general because this is a cubic function and you can have at most three real zeros. All right, the number of zeros will equal the exponent. Um, but in terms of the possibilities, you really have one, two, three, four, five, six. You have 12 different possibilities to possibly check. In other words, you have this possibility. That would be one. Now, either it's a positive one divided by a positive one, a positive one divided by a negative one, negative one divided by a positive one, or a negative one divided by a negative one. I know that sounded like four possibilities, which it is, but technically the result there would only be two, right? Because positive one over positive one is a positive one. Negative one over negative one is a positive one. Negative one over positive one is a negative one. And a positive one over negative one is equal to negative one. Oh my goodness. My mind is on fire. But as you can see, there's really only two possibilities, either positive one or negative one, okay? So out of, so let's just erase this. So out of this, you know, out of these results here, you would take these two and divide them, right? And that, as I showed you, gave you positive and negative one. Then you would do the same thing for these, all four of those possibilities, but you would notice that it would only give you two possibilities, positive two or negative two. And then you could do the same for the next one, right? Dot, 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 dot. So basically what I'm saying here is that you would have all of these possibilities to check. So that's 12 in total, right? Two here, or I should say two here, two here, two here, you know, two here, etc. All right. Now, imagine trying to check this thing 12 times and you're, you know, three of them are going to work, right? So you have a one fourth chance at the start to find the right zero. This is a little bit ridiculous, uh, in my opinion, to kind of use this to find the real zeros. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to use the benefit of the calculator to find the real zeros. And then I'm just going to show you how to apply it, okay? How to apply this rational zero theorem. So just graph the function. Go to, uh, let me just clean it up so you can clearly see this. So just graph that function up there. So uh, x cubed, x raised to the third, then plus 2x squared, all right? Then minus 9x, then minus 18. Oh, where's my x? Where it is? And then minus 18. Just hit graph. Now look at this, right? When we take a look here, we notice that we have... The zeros, remember, are where the, the x values, where the function crosses that x-axis. So it appears to me that it crosses at negative 2, negative 3, and a positive 3, right? So let's just write that on up here. 
So we got x is equal to uh, positive 3, x is equal to negative 2, and x was e I can't write a 2 for, to save my life, and um, x is equal to negative 3, right? So those are the real zeros. Now, if you notice, all of these values were contained within this list of possibilities, right? The negative 2 right? It's part of this, and the negative 3 and positive 3 were here, okay? So those are the zeros. Now, how would you, though, use the rationals? So now that I kind of know what I'm looking for, I won't have to search, you know, 12 different times. Um, but now that I know what I'm looking for, let me show you how to apply this, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these possibilities, right? Remember, you're going to have 12. You're going to take one of them. So let's, for example, take positive 1. And you want to test this number to see whether it will be a real zero. The goal then is to take this number, take this number, and plug it in for every single x value in your function. If it equals zero after you plug that all in, if it equals zero, well then, by gosh, by golly, the number you used is a real zero. Okay? So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do f of positive 1. And everywhere you see then x, you plug in the positive 1. Okay? So that's going to be x cubed plus then 2 times positive 1 squared, minus 9 times positive 1, minus 18. And evaluate this now, meaning solve, right? This is a 1, plus then 2, minus 9, minus 18. Does this thing equal 0? I don't think so. I don't think so. And that's the idea, right? I'm kind of invoking the remainder theorem. In other words, if you plug in a 0, a potential 0, all right, or if you know a, a root, or but it's probably best to call it a potential zero into your function, and you do not get zero as a result when you evaluate it. Well, then the number you plugged in is not a zero. I mean, that kind of makes sense. It doesn't give a value of zero. Okay. So again, positive one is not a zero of this function, and we saw right? We listed out all the zeros and we can see in the graph, it doesn't cross the x-axis at positive one. So we should anticipate that that would, were to happen, that it won't be equal to zero. But imagine now I plug in, I'm going to plug in now, now you might then say, well, then I would test negative one. Well, of course, right? But that's not going to work, right? You'd have to keep testing. Uh, but now I'm going to show you the benefit here of using these values. So just plug in, I don't know, it doesn't matter, plug in three this time. All right, so everywhere you had your x, you're going to plug in a positive 3. Right, so now what you can do, just do it in the calculator, right? You don't, you know, I mean, you could do it out also in your head, but 3 raised to the third, plus then 2 times uh, 3 squared, uh, minus 9 times 3, and then minus 18. Boom. Oh, it equals 0. And that's the point. 3 is a zero, meaning it's an x value that produces a zero for the function. All right. So as you can see, the rational zero theorem basically tells you that you can list out all the possibilities of your zeros. But again, in this case, since we're dealing with a cubic, only three of them are going to work. So three out of 12 are going to work. Are you really going to test all 12? Are you even going to test? You know, it's a little bit unreasonable in my opinion. But that's what you would do, okay? That's how you would apply the rational zero theorem. If you got lucky in the beginning and you found one just by chance, right, then you can use that zero value as a factor. For example, like if a if the zero value is three, then you can take the factor of that, which would be x minus three, and you can divide it into this polynomial function by using synthetic division. And then what you would do, and basically what, what you would find, is that this the, the quotient of this would be some quadratic function, x squared plus, you know, some x coefficient, you know, plus some constant. And then you can easily factor this, most likely. All right? Um, so that's how you can also approach the problem. But, yeah. Hopefully that helps. All right, guys? So thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. I do hope this helped. And if it did, like and subscribe. Maybe you can tell some of your classmates. And check out our channel because we have thousands of videos out there, not only in math, but chemistry and physics as well. we got a whole lot more coming. All right? Thank you so much. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.